Good morning, Bobcats. Eighth grade Bobcats, Mr. Flutter here. Brand new Bob lesson for you today. Um, a lot of times in life we think about when we become adults competing with one another for jobs, for careers. But an interesting article sent to me uh, by a school counselor at CRA this week talked about competing against robots for jobs and how as technology improves, some of those robots are going to end up taking jobs from human beings. And I don't mean this for this to be a doom and gloom Bob lesson. Um, the important thing to think about in this Bob lesson is how important critical thinking is and that gray area where human beings will always be counted on and how important it is for you to build up your skill set and build up your knowledge so that you're not competing with robots for jobs. You're either building the robots or doing something in that gray area. Hope you guys like this Bob lesson. Make it a great week. All right, this week's Bob lesson is going to be titled The Future of Robots and You. But first, let's be our best this week at HMS. Let's be Bob. Let's be safe. Let's be responsible. Let's be respectful. Let's be a learner. containers, I've hauled tankers, I've hauled uh, doubles, hazmat, I got the lights for everything. There's a lot of bad things about it, there's a lot of good things about it. It's not a family life. I was gone three uh, weeks out of a month. And that's you up a little bit, because you, you know, you want to be home with your wife and you know, your family. This is totally different, you know. I never thought of a truck driving itself. I mean, how many people have? Jeff Runyon's left trucking to work for Starsky Robotics. He's one of the first test drivers who has made the leap to driverless trucks. An autonomous future will mean an earthquake level disruption in the American job market. With 5 million professional drivers on the road in the U.S., Goldman Sachs estimates that we could see as many as 300,000 jobs disappearing annually once autonomous vehicles are adopted. And Silicon Valley doesn't seem very concerned. From a pure driver perspective, I think the wave of automation that's coming is very threatening. There's no doubt that uh, a truck driver, a bus driver, uh, someone who drives for either taxi companies or uh, these on-demand uh, companies like Uber and Lyft, they're at risk. You've never been able to stop automation. I think the issue is not whether you're going to stop it, because I think history shows you don't stop it. I think the issue is how do you implement it? What's the responsible way to do it? Who has an obligation to worry about the working people? This isn't a new story. We've already seen the reaction to disruption that technology can cause. Taxi drivers around the world have risen up against ride-sharing companies. Uber is even banned in some cities. What will happen when millions of jobs go up in smoke? And it's not even a human that's replacing you. We're at the calm before the storm, at the cusp of coming off a major cliff. Autonomous vehicles are going to be the leading edge of that. That is going to be a moment that's going to change us. I think this is going to be the next shoe to drop. Like trucking, ride-sharing companies that employ drivers are moving quickly toward automation. Uber is testing in Pittsburgh, and Lyft has partnered with Ford and Waymo to build a fleet of driverless cars. The big three auto companies are investing in driverless technology by spending billions to purchase autonomous driving companies. General Motors acquired Cruise Automation. Ford bought Argo AI, and Fiat Chrysler is partnering with BMW to develop driverless technology. We have to think beyond just working drivers and the auto industry. The ripple effect on jobs could affect almost all of us. If I don't need to stop at a hotel overnight because I'm sleeping in the car, well, what will that do for rest stops and hotels and and other industries. If potentially there are fewer crashes, um, how will that affect um, my job? 
my neighbor's jobs, repair jobs, uh, emergency responders, how will that affect the capacity of hospitals? There's delivery people um, who work for the various delivery companies, and you've got this massive influx of drones that are likely to dot the airspace. There's as many as 7 million in the sky it's at one point uh, down the road. So it's pretty mass uh, disruption out there. It's pretty serious stuff, and a lot of people are at risk. Of course, there's a flip side to all this doom and gloom. Jobs as we know them will be lost, but with new technologies comes new opportunities for work. The disruption could cause short-term pain, but it'll increase long-term prosperity. I see this as a positive, and I know it's going to be hard for some people to hear me say this, because obviously if you lose your job, it's not a good thing. But as a society, as we build technology that takes away repetitive, menial work, uh, we've been able to become more and more creative and more and more educated. Anybody who is employed and driving right now, come to Gadacity. We train you to be a software engineer, data analyst, what have you. And many of the jobs that people pick up after coming to us pay six-figure salaries. I kid you not. It's removed from reality, this idea that everybody's going to go to Silicon Valley and be an engineer. The bad news is that there will be an impact on jobs. The good news is that it's going to take quite a few years before we get there. Uh, so I think we have the time to put in place some uh, new programs to train these workers to basically, for example, instead of driving a truck uh, day in and day out, you basically go uh, build a sensor, fix it, diagnose it, repair it, and so on. So you could actually end up getting a, a higher paying job, but one has to be A, willing to actually learn some new skills, B, the government agencies and nonprofit organizations need to basically step in and put these uh, programs in place. That leaves people like Jeff Runyons in Florida, who are already looking for opportunities in the new economy. You got the older gentleman has been like myself. They don't like it because I think you're trying to take the jobs. It's going to come one way or another. You may not like it or not, but it's going to happen. All right, one of the main things that that video talked about, and that video just took a look at one industry, which was um, the automobile driving, moving either people or goods from one from point A to point B. Um, but, uh, but the larger picture I want you 8th graders to understand today is that as technology improves, there is going to be a higher demand on robots doing jobs. And so future ro robotic jobs, as we see, are going up. And that can be a very good thing, as the video talked about. Whenever we use robots to do job, um, it's, they're higher in efficiency, um, lower in cost. But that also comes at a cost. And the cost that it's coming at is the future demand in the workplace of low-skilled workers. Um, hypothetically, or um, in reality, what is going on is... Um, low-skilled workers, maybe uh, people that don't have a high skill set, maybe high levels of education, um, are asked to do menial, um, low problem-solving, low thought process tasks. And as um, they do those tasks, those can be replaced by robots, and so those jobs, in a sense, end up going away. If you think about it, we've already seen this a lot. If you look at self-checkout stations at the grocery stores, um, now when you go to grocery stores, you see way more self-checkout. That was never a thing until probably five or ten years ago. How about self-purchasing machines at the movie theater? Um, that's something that's fairly new. Um, as we saw from the video, self-driving vehicles. How about email versus post office mail? Um, post office and um, male men and women, those careers have gone down as less people rely on physical snail mail and more people use electronic stuff online. Speaking of electronic stuff online, how about online shopping and um, having retailers? Retailers are people out there in the store that help you find what you're looking for. A lot of people are going to online shopping and as you can see, Capitol Hill Mall really no longer is. So these are just some of examples of how this has already started. Wanted to take some key quotes out of the article and share them with you guys as well. Um, it's cheaper to buy a 35,000 robotic arm than it is to hire an employee who's inefficient making $15 an hour begging french fries. Former McDonald's chief executive Edward Renzi said in an appearance on Fox Business Network in May 2006. 
The biggest determining factor will be education. People with a doctoral degree will only have a 13% chance of being replaced by robots, while people with only a high school degree or lower will have a 74% chance, according to the study. So that's where it talks about education is key to not being replaced by a robot. Um, jobs that require only a high school degree are most endangered. Take cashiers and toll booth operators, for example. These jobs don't require much human analysis, so are easier for machines to handle. Some toll booth operators have already been replaced by automated systems such as EasyPass, which are used in 16, st or 16 states. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics has estimated 80,000 fast food jobs will disappear by 2024. The increase in minimum wage in various states gives companies more reason to replace workers with machines. Um, the fundamental wiring of our brains is the same as it was 100,000 years ago. So that's in our deep nature of value getting various experiences, empathy, companionship, being heard, acting in groups from other humans. Um, those are reasons why robots can never fully replace human beings, though. We're confident that the ability to work effectively with people's emotional states and social drives will remain a deeply human skill for some time to come. Um, another pro of um, that robots can never take away. Robots are cool, but they're not superhuman, President of the Information Technology Innovation Foundation told CNN. There are on average 150,000 hairs on a human head, and each tiny one would need to be cut to an exact length. Will scientists and engineers eventually be able to design a robot that can master those operations? Not likely in our lifetimes. Um, so they're talking about careers there, like in cosmetology and how some careers can't be replaced by robots. A human touch is essential in healthcare, making roles such as physicians and nurses among the least likely to be replaced by machines. Um, computers are increasingly good at making medical diagnoses, but patients don't want to get a diagnosis from an impersonal computer. And finally, the time we spend with screens is growing. In-person interactions are decreasing. We know that from technology. Did some Bob lessons early in the year on it. And we are wired to crave them, so we'll value them more highly. And the people who can deliver them are well positioned for the future. So talking about working on communication skills, um, things of that nature. All right, that leads us to this week's Jelly Bean Question of the Week winners, who are Katrin Selesgar, Owen Gomez, Hayden Hurley, Sidney Beardsley, and Kai Mosier. The answer to last week's riddle was, it is 12.34 p.m. on May 6, 1978. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Come see me for some jelly beans. Bring a friend. Rumor on the street is they may get a jelly bean or two as well. All right, this week's jelly bean question of the week is, what word looks the same when read backwards and upside down? Hint, it's not the word noon. You think you know? Submit your answer to the Bob Box no later than Friday. All right, Bobcats, let's go out there and make it a great week at the Helena Middle School.